Hi everybody, how you all doing? Been cold enough for you in the last week? I know a lot of you had snow, I actually saw it myself, as you all know, travel up and down the country in my wagon, and that lot, I was up in Leeds when all the snow hit. <laughs> yeah, that was fun, yeah. But, yeah, it's been bloody cold, but happy to say the old air source heat pump's been standing up to the test of time. Well impressed, handled it no problems, so you know, We've had it minus five, minus six at night down here. Um, did get proper parky and it's um, kept running no problems. Yeah, it's been on a lot more, but you know, it's coped with the temperatures absolutely fine. Kept the, kept the pond nice and toasty and warm. Um, yeah, being on a little bit more, yeah, um, I've bumped up the price a bit, um, but as you all know, I'm well insulated, well covered. So, uh, you know, the air's not been escaping. So I did uh, did actually go sort of like um, over the seven pound mark uh, this week. Uh, it's just over seven pound, seven pound 20 I hit. But again, as I said, this is just where I live, my setup, my amount of water and my insulation that I got on the pond. Everybody else will be different. This is just as a guideline. I know righty, um, is went over 11 was 11 pound just over or something like that it cost him for a week um, but his insulation on his pond to the back end of it's open by the bushes so it doesn't trap all the air in whereas mine's all you know obviously there's a spin you around obviously there's a you know there is air holes for you know gas exchange and oxygen to go in and the bad gases come out but you know it's sealed off all the way around it doesn't look pretty i know but this time of year it's one of them things to do but yeah that's holding all the air in so like i said the air source heat pump although it has been on more it's not been on that much and like i said you know just over the seven pound mark this week so you know i'm well happy with that um, if it's got down to that temperatures and sort of like it was down at those temperatures for most of the week sort of at night sort of you know anywhere between sort of like minus three up to minus six you know so yeah brilliant and I've been keeping an eye on it when I'm away with the Wi-Fi unit um, so so far no problems with that whatsoever Wi-Fi units holding the uh, uh, seems to be working okay and I'll go in there as you can see 16.4 in the pond. Today is lovely and toasty and warm. 9.2, but to be honest with you, it doesn't feel like 9.2. And can you hear? Both the pumps still working. Nice, quiet drone. Not like the uh, the old ones I had. You know, still. So week three into these, well happy with them as well. But not all plain sailing. I did have a few problems. Uh, I did have a bit of a major problem so that's my uh, chamber one um, on the uh, dechlorinating unit uh, spin it round spin it round yeah, oh dear yes it froze and it broke yeah, my bag really, I should have insulated more than what I did. I'd literally just had it wrapped up. Um, and it f froze, because I don't have the water trickling in constantly, because I'm on the water meter. Uh, I've got it set on a timer, so it comes on twice a day. Um, and flows in, sort of like twice a day, runs for about an hour twice a day. And so it's still swapping out water, but obviously on a meter I can't forward to have it trickling in all day unfortunately otherwise my uh, water bill would be sort of like over you know a thousand pound for six months and stuff like that you know which I've uh, heard of some people suffering from so I don't want to go that far so yeah so it froze and it broke um, now I have actually um, been speaking to Viair this is a Viair system my one because um, I said about the uh, bleed valves on top here they broke um, it's supposed to be a red button I'll show you on a new one it's supposed to be a red button on there and then sort of like you just press the button in 
and it bleeds all the air out and you keep it pressed down until water starts trickling out the top and you take your finger off and there it comes but once the button breaks off this little valve here it's uh, it doesn't seal properly but when the water's running through you have to come out and just pull it up and just try and hold it in position um, until it sort of like holds in place for a little while but as soon as the water goes off or pressure drops it slides back down and then when the water comes back on it starts leaking out the top again so I was in discussions to them about that and they were quite happy to send me out a replacement kit for them because um, I can't remember how old it was but I think it was under a year old this particular system um, when these went um, but then obviously this happened and I said to them, I said, look because it switched off you know frozen and you know given their juice um, they replaced the whole lot for me so you know fair play to them so I've got a nice new system to go in, but I'm not going to install it just yet. Um, what I've done is I've taken this one off and I've plumbed the outdoor hose just into the two carbon blocks. So I'm still, do it's just not taking out the, um, the pre-filter here where it takes out any sort of sediment or anything like that. So I'm still dechlorinating, but um, I decided before I put it in, the new one in, uh, going to do it all properly. And I'm going to sort of like, put another little box just on the wall just in there just behind the tree where the new dechlorinator will go um, with an electronic um, flow meter on it and uh, then obviously come down the wall down and then into the filter where I run the water in and then I'm going to put some NDPE pipe all the way along the wall all the way down all the way out through the other wall down the bottom there, out to the front. Out to the front of the house, um, which is where me um, outdoor water supply is. Uh, I did think about trying to run it through the house, um, but it's, you know, it means sort of like chipping away at all the plasterboard and running pipes through, you know, from the from the kitchen all the way through the living room, cutting great big holes in the plasterboard and all this sort of, too much hassle too much expense um so i'm just going to run it around the outside of the house from the outdoor tap uh put a splitter on so i can still have a tap going out the front run it all the way around the back of, into the back garden like i said into the chlorinated box probably have a tea piece for the chlorinated box and have another pipe coming down so i can have an outdoor pipe a tap out here for doing all the water in the garden getting the jet wash off and cleaning the conservatory and cleaning the decks and everything off and then you know have it going into the chlorinator off the tea piece as well so I've got permanent supply going to that and then there will be a tap on well I'll show you the system they sent but yeah that's the plan um, I've got the MDP MDP um, blue pipe um, mate of mine had some lying about so chucked it to us for nothing so all I've had to pay for is the fittings. Not got all the fittings yet. Um, screw fix uh, didn't have them in stock, so I'm waiting for them to turn up. So I'm not going to get that much done today. I'll just do a bit of fiddling around out the front. But yeah, yeah. So a bit of a disaster, but nothing major. Uh, we'll have a look at the fish in a minute, and uh, we'll have a look at the K plus. See how that's uh, going. See you in a minute. Spending my day with you, my life's sunny and better. Girl, when I'm with you, she illuminates so bright like a star in the skylights. She got the looks, the good, oh boy, I need her so bad in my life. Shawty, where you wanna go, 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 go? London, Paris, Tokyo, oh, Shawty, we could go. Don't need no luggage, na 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 na. Don't need no stress, girl, na 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 na. Just me and your sons are right, sons are right, girl. I want nobody but you. I want nobody but you. I want nobody but you. I want nobody but you.
that song's for you When you put down and better Shawty, I'll be there for you We'll be like Bonnie and Clyde How we everybody else You and me against the world, girl You'll be my B, I'll be your J, yeah We'll be so dangerous in love, girl Shawty, where you wanna go, 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 go London, Paris, Tokyo, oh Shawty, we could go Don't need no luggage, na 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 na. Don't need no stress, girl, na 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 na. Just me and your songs are right, songs are right, girl. I want nobody but you. 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 So this is the uh, replacement um, water purifier or dechlorinator, whatever way you want to call it. Um, particular models of IA1, uh, other brands and makes are available, but this is the uh, one I use. And um, for those of you who are not running one of these systems or thinking about getting one, uh, I'll just run you through it quickly. So basically, um, it's a three stage filter. Uh, so you've got your three chambers there, these are 10 inch, uh, you can get another one which is 20 inch and you can get RO systems as well, but not going to go into the ins and outs and the complexities of RO, um, mainly because I don't understand it that well myself. Uh, all I know is that um, on the more affordable RO systems there's quite a bit of waste water and if you like me on the water meter uh, it's not something you want to do but there are systems that you can use where you don't waste so much but uh, they start to get into the lots of money category but anyway yeah going back to this so yeah so you've got your three stages these are three chambers and then in each of the three chambers you get a cartridge cartridge so first stage for mine is that goes in there and that's a five micron sediment filter basically it just takes out any sort of like a, any of the solids or anything like that that's in in the water uh, so you know just particles of metals and things like that second stage on this particular setup for mine is um activated car car uh, carbon uh, made from uh, coconut shells and kdf um so basically it removes any of the heavy metals uh chlorine bits of pieces like that so chlorine heavy metals removal and it if you're running it for a, a drinking water it improves the taste and the aroma of the water and then Again, on going into the third chamber for my particular water setup, it's the Carbon Block Silver Series. Um, again, this removes chlorine, organic compounds, and heavy metals, and again improves the taste. So basically, it's two lots of carbon. Now, my water authority doesn't use chloramine um, in their water. If yours does, and you can go on your local authority's website, your water supplier's website, and it'll give you a breakdown of what they put in the water. Now, if you've got chloramine in your water, then you need a different different setup of um, cartridges. I think it's the middle one that you normally replace with a different cartridge that will remove the chloramine. So just, uh, if you're thinking about one of these, you need to check what's in your water, what they put in your water around here. So basically, so these all fit let's just do one and unscrew this so basically the unscrew the 
and remove the wrapping. I'm not going to do that now because I'm not ready to put it in. So, and plonks it in there. And then, put you there in a sec. It goes this way up, so it makes it a bit easier. You screw it up with by hand to start with. That centralizes itself. Um, when I come to fill it, I'll show you. Uh, I've got some nifty little rings in there that help centralize it. And once it gets so far, you take your spanner that uh, comes with a kit. Yeah, lines up with the little ridges on the system and then you just give it a nip up until it's uh, nice and tight with your spanner. So repeat all the same with all three chambers, putting the blocks in in the orders they're supposed to go. And that's it, that's that done. In the kit, it comes with um, these little screws now, depending on which kit, the basic uh, three stage chlorinator comes with two of these, and then you can screw, and it will also give you two of them, which basically just screw onto there, and then you can put your hose with your click fit fittings on either end, and away you go. Now, when these come set up from the factory, just going back a bit before we uh, go on any further. They come set up with the water inlet from this side on the frame. So basically this is turned reversed and the water flows in. Now, because of where I'm gonna be putting this, it wouldn't work. So all you gotta do if is on top here, you've got the screws and four for each chamber. Now the chambers are bolted together with one of these, so you undo the whole four screws, lift it off, spin it round, and then screw it back up again. That's all you've got to do to get it to go on the wall to get the flow going in the direction you want it to go. So, but like I said, when it comes to the factory, it's reversed from what I've got here. So, anyway, so yeah, so my flow will be going in from there into there, comes up. Now, when you're filling it up for the first time, you got these air buttons on top so as the water comes in push the button down you can hear the air escape and you leave it pressed down until water comes out and let it go and then you move on to the next chamber and then the third chamber and then your water comes out this end now in the kit also comes with a couple of brass connectors which screw into there and then that's got in there um i can't remember what size it is now but what it fits onto is because i added an extra extra to this is this yeah so they screw onto there and what it is is the digi flow so that will measure your flow going through now also this particular one which is the slightly um like i say it's not the basic model it's the next model up also comes with this tap so you can control the flow with this tap once it's in there so obviously that'll be fitted on this end after the flow meter so you know I'm, well that's how i'm going to fill it i'm going to fill it after the flow meter and in that um, you push this hose so that basically just pushes into there locks in and then obviously the other end of this goes to uh, wherever you're having your water go into your pond. Mine will be going into the uh, uh, filter, into the pond return side of things. So, after explaining where I'm not sort of 
setting it all up but um so basically water come in blop 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 through the flow meter to the little tap to the hose to the pond anyway i'll show you in more detail when we get it all uh connected up and fitted in hopefully um next weekend um just run out of time didn't feel too good yesterday so didn't really do anything yesterday uh so i've just had a day of sitting around doing nothing a bit of a jippy tummy but all better now um so yeah all right let's crack on outside and start getting the old um uh water pipe connected So making a start on the front. Um, that's the outside. That's the outside tap that comes from the sort of like the, the main water supply inside the house. To the outdoor tap. So what I'm doing is running down to a junction. A bit going off down there. That's going to go to another tap, so we can connect our hose for water in the garden and everything like that out there. And then this one's. I'm going to go along, bend and feed off to the back garden. That's right, that's... So I've gone as far as I can at the moment until me other bits and pieces are turned up. Uh, putting the insulation on as I go. Interesting point, this insulation here is just a cheap polyoperine or just foam insulation. Now if you read the specs about it and you ask the people in the stalls, it's not meant for outdoor use. Which got me to thinking a little bit. One, the tap um, frost cold protectors that you can buy are made from exactly the same stuff and that's used outdoors. And two, uh, I've got a couple of friends who are in the plumbing trade who say we use it all the time outdoors. Uh, no problems with it whatsoever as long as you don't nick it or anything like that it's 100 waterproof so job done so i'm gonna give it a try anyway so gone there got go gone into the corner there i need another bend go along the wall and then gonna go through the wall and up the garden so but that means temporarily i've got no water supply um for me for my pond and um, I've got to do a filter clean oops uh, so I'm going to have to rig something up with the indoor tap through the house up to the dechlorinator and then up to the pond I'll get there I'll do it anyway let's go on in have a cup of tea just a quick update on the K plus media I took this piece out um because so i was just having a look at it now i'm not sure whether it's showing up on camera but to the naked eye i don't know where i can focus a bit better than what i got there now but to the naked eye you can see it start um starting to change color just on the inside of the uh, uh of the little uh chambers come too close it loses focus but yeah I don't think it's really showing up on the camera but you can see it's starting to change color starting to get a slight brown tinge to the naked eye but like I said it's not showing up on camera but that's been in sort of like three weeks and like I said you can like I said to the naked eye you can see the biofilm starting to form which is um pretty rapid actually compared to the old uh, k1 media i mean it could be sort of like a couple of months before you'd actually see any brownness appearing so perhaps what they say on a tin is what actually happens but i'll keep you updated on it uh week by week um for those of you who are interested thinking about adding the k plus but yeah so far it just seems to be maturing quite fast you know, actually that angle there you can just see a little bit Bit of a little bit of a, a brown tinge starting to appear but anyway yeah that's that i was um, browsing the internet and um i came across these which uh is a char 
at Surrey, uh, believe it or not. Um, if you sort of see on the back end there, it's got a, sort of like a bit of a sumi effect. It looks like a chag, chagoy. Um, this one's a, a better example of, well, you know, that's a more higher class example. So it's got the more, got the Asuri pattern in, except for it's sort of like um, chag colour with sort of like a darker, almost black grey colouring on it. Um, it's not a variety I was that aware of. Now, the question that that brings up is my chag, Chad, the chag, has that sort of like a bit of sumi up round his neck. So, is he a Chagoy, or is he a Char at Surrey? That's what I want to know. Um, so, any of you sort of like experts out there who know uh, this particular uh, uh, breed of uh, Chagoy, um, maybe let me know. I mean, uh, Chad was sold to me as a Chagoy, but the more I look at it, the more it makes me wonder. You know, that one is being sold by Gatwick Coy, uh, classed as a char at Surrey. You know, it's got the good size of a Chagoy. Or perhaps it is a variety of Chagoy and that's what they call a char at Surrey. I'm not 100% sure. I've uh, never come across it before. Anyway, guys, that's it for this week. So um, stay safe. Look after yourselves. And remember, it's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. All right, everybody, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.